Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. So, are we ready then for round two of the FIA Manufacturer Series? So, as you are all well aware, this is a YouTuber series of me against Rory, which is here he is, and then James, um, which is Adventure Racing, and he is currently sat in P3. I am well below them and Rory is just above me as well. So we've got a lot of racing to do here and we need to get some big boy points. We want to catch up those lads. And as you can see, we're actually in the same lobby as Rory and we have 278 points on offer for the winner here today. So I need to be getting some big boy points. So let's just jump straight into this. We'll jump straight into qualifying. We're in the Mustang. Let's see what we can do against the big boys here. So. Going through here then, just coming out of Ascari, I just want to make sure I had someone to slip stream on the end of, but uh, I um, got more than I bargained for, to be honest with you, because just look how many cars are here, just queuing up to go around Parabolica, and there's just so many cars, and I'm just waiting for the perfect opportunity, but it never really came. So I've gone through here, but there's Rory on the left-hand side, so funnily enough, we're actually going to be going to follow Rory throughout the whole of this lap. So let's see what we can do and let's see what one of my rivals can do around Monza. So here we go then. So for anyone who is unaware of what this track combination is, you have to use the hard tyres. So there's no mediums or softs, no worrying about fuel, but also as we go past here, you're going to notice there's no braking. As you can see, there's no chicane. There's no first chicane. So the speed we're getting here is unbelievable. So it's all about the top end. Thankfully though, Choosing Ford and choosing the Mustang, that is something we do not have to worry about whatsoever. So we go through the first sector, 25.6, not too bad. Going through the first chicane there, just making sure we don't go, you know, two or three wheels over the white line, because in the FIA Manufacturer Series, the, the penalties just seem a little bit harsher. As Rory goes wide there, and he's going to go off, and that's, oh no, <laughs> disaster for him there. Good news for me, but disaster for him. Thankfully though, we do have the slipstream of the Dodge Viper ahead of us, which is great to see because if we lost that we would be dropping back so badly it's unbelievable but you can see there's a massive lag spike there by the ancient pleb so it's got some sort of plebby connection and yeah it just it, it kind of messed me up a little bit in a strange way because i just didn't expect it and i kind of had to let go of the throttle i would have had to you know break so early and let go thankfully though he does get a half second penalty but that's not good news for us in a way because that means he's going to back out now so now i haven't got the slipstream uh, on our way to the parabolica so we're going to struggle here, we really will. So breaking well after the cones here, keeping it nice and tight, just waiting for that perfect exit. You have to get to the right hand side for the shortest possible track time, I guess, or to make the track as short as you possibly can. We go over to the right hand side here. So what's the time we're going to say here? We set a 138.9 and amazingly, it's only a quarter of a second off the first place. That's not too shabby. And thankfully, I have to say, as we start our second lap here, uh, the Italian driver behind me, or the Brit, I should say, I'm not quite sure who it is, I need to double check that, um, is giving me a push all the way up the straight. So we go through the first corner here, he's giving me a massive push, which is excellent to see, uh, and it's, you know, it's going to help me out massively. So I am going to go through here. Unfortunately, <laughs> I am a quarter of a second down in the first sector, as these guys start to fight, it's the worst place to do it, and that guy backs out. We are down in the first sector, and that's purely because we didn't have the slipstream. Yes, we got the push, but it's nowhere near as good as the slipstream, but it doesn't matter. Because on this lap, we will improve. Just wait and see. So we go through Lesmo 1, no issues. Lesmo 2, nice and solid. See another person going off there in the BMW. So again, just out of the slipstream range, going down here, uh, preparing ourselves for Scari. Just outside of it now. As the BMW driver is behind us once more, is he going to push us? Because it's silly to go through here and try and overtake. As you can see, we're actually purple now in the second sector. So now we're not having to fight or break early or anything like that. We're actually purple. So this could be... P1 here, and the guy in front of us, CS Smith here, 93, he's gone wide, but you can see the hazard lights are on, you know that's only one thing, he's gone off, and he's going to back out of the lobby, ah, he's backed out of his qualifying, and I've lost the slipstream going down this straight, and onto the straight, to finish the lap, now we do get a slight nudge by the BMW driver, but again, it's not a massive worry, so we're going to go all the way to the right hand side, just to try and make the track as short as I possibly can, we're going to cross the line, are we going to improve at all? Yes, we are. We get a 38.8. That's only a tenth improvement. But amazingly, that puts us up to P5. And the guy behind us in the BMW M6, the Brit, actually benefits from that massively. And he finishes P4. Just updating the settings there. So there's qualifying complete. And as you can see, I'm in P5. But my biggest rival in this one is Rory. And he's sat in P13. 
So that's a fantastic result for us. That's a gap of eight positions, so he's going to have to do one hell of a race, one hell of a race if he's going to beat us. So, no practice. This is the first entry. So this is the 4 p.m. entry, I believe. Now, I don't know about tyre wear, and I don't know about fuel. I know what they are, like times eight, times ten, or whatnot. But I don't know what it's going to be like over 15 laps of Monza, because I've done no practice. So I'm just going to put the fuel on one here. I'm just going to keep an eye on it as it goes up. So wait for the free... Well, not green lights, are they? Just the numbers to go down. So we're underway here. You can see at the start, I put the brake bias to the rear by one. Only one, because I want to be able to adjust that quickly if I do need to change things. Say if the rear tyres really start to go off, I'm going to have to change that. Now, surprisingly, the Mustang is an absolute unit in a straight line. Just look at that. Regardless of the BMW having the slipstream, I've managed to overtake him here, and the BMW just gets the worst possible start. It tries to give you room. And, oh, mate, head and hands. He must have been absolutely fuming. He's gone wide. He's touched the gravel. Just one of the worst things you can do. But this is the second worst thing you can do here. Go over the kerb. You can slow it down there. Two wheels over the white line. Going over the kerb. And you know what that means. Yes. Half a second penalty. The worst possible time to get it as well. On the first lap. That's the last point. It's the last time you want to you wanna get a penalty like that. On the first lap, it's just going to be an absolute killer. Thankfully, though, as we go through Lesmo 2... It's not as bad as I feared because we've got a second gap to the guy behind us and we managed to serve that quite quickly. So it's not too shabby. Is it going to be enough though to keep ahead of, I think it's like Belgium or Hungary behind me? I'm not quite sure. Rubbish my European flags. Anyways, breaking on the concrete on the right hand side. We go through Ascari here. Nice and smooth. Now we're just out of slipstream range of the Belgium in front of us and that spells disaster really. Because I really want to get a podium here. Well, I want to finish first. I want to finish up as high as I possibly can. Now, you can see the guy behind me. He's getting a slipstream. But this is where I'm going to have to think carefully here. And, you know, I kind of my racecraft kind of comes into play as I get a big shunt by the BMW driver behind me. He does get a one-second penalty for that. Unfortunate for him. But I let the BMW driver go because there's no point fighting through uh, Parabolica there. We don't want to do that. I want the slipstream of the guy all the way up the straight here so I can overtake him once more. We want to work as a team. If you want to do well in this race, I found you have to work as a team with some randomers, like people you've never really raced with or, or you don't know what the temperament is, you don't know anything. But all you know is the fastest way around this track is to keep using each other's slipstream, and that's exactly what we did. So as we go through this first corner, I am now, you know, getting closer to the Vols Hack and Beater, but fortunately, actually, not, I'm talking rubbish there. But on the straight, I did catch up massively. Uh, and yeah, it's exactly what you need to do. You need to swap the positions with each other to have the best chance of catching the people up ahead. Now, you can see the Volkswagen driver actually has a half second penalty, and the two lads behind me also have a second penalty. So this is gonna be, bring me back into play here. So those two are gonna drop off behind me, and it's gonna leave me a nice little gap um, to anyone behind me, and it's gonna cause me to get really close to this Volkswagen Beetle driver up ahead. Now, I do really like the Beetle, but it's not really suited for Monza. Um, it's got no top end, whereas this Mustang has a lot of top end, thankfully. Now we go through here, middle sector, we are purple, but that's to be expected. We're on lap two. Okay, Ascari then. Nice and smooth through here. The beetle is gonna be very, very strong. Through the middle sector, the beetle is gonna be extremely strong. So we have to make a tactical decision here once more. Are we gonna go for the move? Yes, we are. So we're gonna go up the right-hand side because we're gonna get enough time to get a car length ahead of him, break at the right point. We're gonna still hit the apex, exactly what we need to do. We'll power out here. Now he is going to use the slipstream to overtake me on this straight once more. And that is exactly what we need to do once more. It's all about thinking and using the correct racecraft and just thinking in your head, thinking of the future plan, making sure that we get as far ahead as we can. Now I was fully expecting this guy here, as you see he, he shunts me. Now I was fully expecting him to go overtake me now and then I can use him uh, going through this sector here, but he doesn't. Fair play. As we work as a team, you can see we're actually purple now. We go to lap five, going through the first sector, because we just kept doing it. We kept swapping positions on the straight. I would overtake, go through the first corner, then let him through, and it worked perfectly, and we managed to catch up with P2. So thankfully, by working as a unit, as a team, we managed to catch this guy up. But as you can see, unfortunately, I don't know whether it's from contact or cutting the chicane, the chap behind me, through all his hard work and effort, you know, working as a team, he's dropped back after the penalty. And unfortunately, that is going to cost him to be out of this race. Um, no chance of a podium there. I know it's only, you know, two second gap now, but it's just too much. You can see we're actually going for a personal best there uh, as we go through uh, Ascari once more. 
and we're on the back of the Porsche now, which is fantastic to see. So now we've got to make a decision here once more. What are we going to do, folks? Are we going to stay on the back of him? Are we going to go for a move through Parabolica? Now you can see I've got the slipstream here. I could have potentially dived up the inside, but we've still got a long way to go in this race. We've still got 10 laps, so we need to think smart. Not too shabby through there. A little bit wide, but we've still got the slipstream. That's the main thing. So now what we're going to do here is I'm going to latch onto the back of him. We're going to get massive launch through the slipstream, and because of all these launches and stuff like that, I managed to set a 39 flat. That is very, very good race pace, I think. And now I'm going to slot into the left-hand side here. He's then going to follow me. And then we're going to go through the first corner. Now, I know the Porsche is going to be quicker through here. I managed to actually nail this. I think that's pretty good. Now, the Porsche is so much quicker through that corner. So now I'm going to go to the left-hand side. But I make a decision here to break early to let the Porsche go. Because I know how much quicker this Porsche is through Lesmo 1 and Lesmo 2. And it's going to prove it here. So you can see as we go through that chicane, we're four and a half tenths behind him. But as we go through Lesmo 1, he's going to gain a little bit of time here. Even though I feel like I nailed the apexes through Lesmo 1 and Lesmo 2, you're going to see the Porsche is just that bit quicker. So if I ended up in front of him, it just would have slowed us both down. It's utterly, utterly pointless. So we're going to work together as a team and see how f if we can catch up the guy uh, in P1. PR1 driver, the Italian. Incredibly incredibly quick so I'm going to give you another prime example here as he goes through the right hand side I'm just going to let go of the brakes let him overtake go through Lesmo 1 and 2 and then I'd overtake again and it worked perfectly until lap 10 because unfortunately I break early again to let him through but he breaks way way too late he hits the curb he's over the, um, the yellow curb there sausage curb and he tries to get on the power too early and it's just a disaster and it's such a shame we worked so well together, and I was I was wishing the best for him. I thought we were going to have an amazing battle on the last lap. As we go through the replay here, you can see he just breaks way too late. Um, there's a bit of concrete on the right-hand side is where you break, but with his worn tyres, it's just not good enough. And, uh, yeah, just need to break that a little bit early. But that does promote us up to P2 now. Now, we do have a nice, comfortable gap to the Frenchman behind us. But the Mustang, it just struggles when it's by itself. Yes, I have the top end, but as we go through here, there's a gain a break way too late. Um, and I just don't hit the apex as smoothly as I like to. The rear end steps out a little bit, and that just invites the French driver behind me to get that slipstream. So as soon as he goes to three quarters of a second, he's going to get it, and he does get it temporarily. But as soon as he gets it, he suddenly drops off. So surely there's some sort of mistake that he's made there. So let's see if we can check it out and have a look. So here he is, catching up. He's setting really good lap times, constantly in the 139. It's exactly where you want to be, and he's going through Lesmo 1 here, and I think he just catches the grass, maybe, or just gets on the power too early. And unfortunately, he just spins out. And that's the end of his race as well. Disaster. But that is such good news for me. Because, guys, we're P2. We've got a second gap to the Belgian behind us. He's in the Beetle. He's going to have no top end. All I have to do now is cross the line, bring it home, and I am going to get a P2 in this high-rated lobby in the Mustang. It is going to be absolutely magnificent for me. And I am so happy with that result. You have no idea. I was literally pumping the air. I couldn't believe it when I crossed the line and got a P2. Amazing result. It's going to be so good for my championship against the other two YouTubers. I'll leave their descriptions down below if you want to check their YouTube accounts out. So, so happy with that, honestly. And it's going to be a new personal best for myself, points-wise. I've never managed to get this amount of points before. My previous best was 265. As you can see, Rory only got P17 there, but it doesn't matter. He did go again, and I think he did improve. So make sure you check his video out if you want to see how he got on. But we're going to check how many points we've got here. So it's only a P2, but it's a massive P2 in a lobby like this. And we managed to get 267 points. An amazing result. I absolutely love Monza. Oh, what a track and what a race. So let's have a look at this then. So if you are still watching, please comment down below RIP BMW because this driver here, oh mate, what a disaster. I forgot to show it at the start of the video, but what an absolute disaster this guy here. Oh, you can see everyone flying past. Fair play to him. I would have just quit at this point. I think a lot of people would because there's no chance. So there are the standings, folks. As you can see, I'm currently P4 for 4, which I'm very, very happy with. Uh, you've got James in P6 and you've got Rory in P10. So battle of the YouTubers, your boy's sitting pretty in first place. Really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.